It's the last new moon of 2023. Isn't that amazing? This is the lunar cycle, the Sag new moon on the 12th of December. This lunar cycle is the one that will carry us into 2024. This is the energy that heralds in 2024. So for me, this is a really beautiful one to pay attention to. Um, something I'd love to weave in here is the collective energy of January 1st, right? That's like a new beginnings, new chapters, new starts. How can we weave the human psyche collective energy that we all get swept up into? How can we weave that into astrological energy that we also all get swept up into? My aim is to bring those two together today, or my aim is to bring more of the astrology together today and try to weave it into, how can we get the most out of 2024, right? How can we get the most out of the end of 2023? What is left to do this year? That's maybe my question that I love to pose and offer up as a way of walking into this episode because there are so many things around endings going on. There's so many things around, yeah, it's a new beginning, but it's like new beginnings, meaning it's a new moon. New moons mean new chapters, new beginning, um, planting new seeds. So yes, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. But it's also wrapping up a few things. Interestingly enough, astrologically, here's what's being wrapped up. Pluto is finishing up his last, his last couple degrees in Capricorn into Aquarius. This is, to me, the biggest transit of 2024. I, I will, it's to, to me, it's the biggest, it's one of the biggest things that's going on in the background in astrology right now. It's one of the most important ones. It's gonna be the deepest transformation for all of us, both on a personal level, like in our personal lives, and collectively what's going on. It's linked to US Pluto return. It's, it's linked to lots and lots and lots and lots of things. You can see this playing out and I wanna dive deep into this today. Like I hope y'all are up for talking about toxic masculinity, the evolution of the masculine, um, structures, patriarchy, not from a let's, let's beat the crap out of the masculine kind of a way, but let's support the evolution of the masculine in ourselves, in our partners, our friends, our communities, and in the world. Because to me, this last couple degrees in Pluto, oh, do we have this opportunity, right? We've got this opportunity to like really move more into grace-filled, high-level expressions of masculine. And let's face it, we are all expressing masculine. Every day we are expressing both masculine and both feminine. Um, and so I wanna talk a little bit about that. Don't worry, we won't get too masculinized um, in this conversation. There's a lot of feminine archetypal energies at play. Venus is doing a big old dance. She's on a big journey. She's been on a big journey in 2023 and I wanna talk about that. Maybe what that's kind of leading you into 2024 around, like think about love, think about relationships, um, think about what it is that brings you pleasure. Think about matters of the heart. Like have we taken time this year, um, maybe we need to make some adjustments, but have we taken time to really honor our heart's desires, to really hold our hearts, love our hearts, ask our hearts, you know, like what is the kind of life you're wanting to create? Like what are the ways that love wants to flow through me into my life that light me up? That like this is the constant Venus journey and she keeps going into the underworld to excavate the truths for you, right? She keeps going, let me go deeper into the hidden within to show you what it is that truly lights you up, that truly makes you radiant, that truly makes you come alive. This is the Venus journey. She's opposing Jupiter during this new moon. That's stunning. Like, so this new moon is just gonna make all of those themes louder. All of those themes louder. All of those Venusian themes louder. Uh, the other thing that I want to share around this, like, you know, coming into the first of the year, closing this year, this is the wild. This is like one of the wildest aspects of what I'm looking at in this new moon chart. Mercury is going retrograde the day after the new moon. So Mercury on this new moon is stationed. I mean, you can essentially say Mercury's already stopped, is already pretty much going retrograde when this new moon happens. 
He's then traversing backwards an underworld journey, right? That's your mind. So instead of your heart, which is Venus, I was saying Venus goes underworld to excavate the hidden. This is now your mind is going underworld to excavate the hidden in the energy of Capricorn Sagittarius. So he starts his journey in Capricorn, goes back into Sag, and then when he goes direct on January 1st, Right? This, this, remember I was talking about how this lines up, like the collective human new beginning lining up. The mind, that's what most of us are most associated with. Most of us are most identified with the mind. That's why you will see Mercury retrogrades are more talked about than any other retrograde because it's the one that we notice the most. It's the one that most people notice the most. It's the one that we're most aware of, most conscious of because we spend more time in our minds than we do focusing on our hearts or focusing on Neptunian like mystical awareness, which is really huge, right? Neptune's just gone direct on the 6th. So less than a week before this new moon takes place and Neptune transits whenever he stations. It's about a week before and a week after. So very much in heightened Neptune energy plus this new moon square Neptune. It's a mystic moon. It is a mystic moon. Mystic mind to end the year and start the new year, right? Because remember, this is the lunar cycle. So this goes until the next new moon, which is in January. What is the date of the next new moon? So the next new moon in January, the first new moon of the year isn't until the 11th, right? So this whole lunar cycle, you can kind of feel into Neptune is heralding us into 2024. Let me make this a little more tangible. What are some reflective questions or what are some things that you could maybe you know do around your new moon ritual or end of the year. I know for some of us, we really like ramp up the journaling, right? We really ramp up like the soul conversations or the making lists and like thinking about, okay, what was life in 2023? What is life in 2024? And so I'd love to, as we go through this whole video, pause at certain moments and bring in reflective questions that kind of support us looking back over the year, support us going into 2024, but also are based on the current energetics and the doorways that are open. Like to me, all of these archetypes I'm talking about, Neptune's an archetype, Venus is an archetype, right? They're just, they're archetypal energies. We could give them personalities, we could call them gods and goddesses, right? All of them, they're there and they're like, hey, pick me, right? I'm in perfect position to support you. You know, some of us we talk about, we have like guides or angels that are helping us. These archetypes are that too, you know, and they're like, and the ones that I'm going to talk about and give us reflective questions around and hopefully help you to like journey with, it's like you take a guided journey with Neptune out of 2023 into 2024. And it can be as tangible as just, you know, answering the questions that I give you, you know, like you just write down the answers that come, or maybe you sit down with a group of your gal pals or guy friends or peeps, whatever, and you just hang out and you're like, these are the questions we're gonna dive into today, right? Maybe some of you are holding men's groups or women's circles or people circles or animal circles or tree circles, right? I don't, whatever we're communing with that helps us get to deeper truth. Sometimes for me, my deepest truth gets pulled out when I'm talking to a tree. I, really and truly, sometimes it's when I'm talking to my intimate partner for some weird, wild reason, like different energies can pull different, deeper truths out. Um, and that's maybe something that can be really helpful is what is mirroring you? I love this question and I love this in this particular energy being so Neptunian, right? Again, remember, Neptune's squaring the new moon and has just gone direct. So it was in like full force, here we go. Um, mirroring, right? Like, what is it that you're choosing or who is it that you're choosing to bounce your energy off of, to bounce your ideas off of, to bounce your psychic space off of, to bounce your heart space off of, right? And, and whose energetics are you allowing to reflect back to you? Right? Because the world's always reflecting something back to us. 
people are projecting things onto us. They're giving us their view of us or they're sharing, here's what I see in you. Whether they're speaking it or not, it's not spoken all the time. It's body language, right? My dog is brilliant at this. There's obviously no words coming back at him, but he will literally reflect back to me that my heart is closed a little bit that day, right? Like it'll be reflected back to me where he's just kind of like, Mer. and I know this because the moment I catch it and I'm like, wait a second, let me open my heart, right? I realize like, oh wow, this is not normally my love state. My love state is normally more open hearted. There's normally more love flowing through me. So let me do that. Let me do a practice. So just let me intentionally move into that space. And so I do. And then you, I watch him and he just, he turns, he becomes a completely different dog, right? He's suddenly not being naughty because he just wants to feel more love. He's not picking up my sock and eating the goddamn thing, right? Like who else has a puppy? You got a puppy? Leave it in the comments below. Let me know the breed and let me know how old it is, right? Mine's GSP, 10 months, insane, wild, love him, wouldn't change it for the world, but let me tell you, this little thing's got me on my toes. <laughs> Um, no, really and truly, I'd love to meet your pets. I'd love to if you feel to share anything in the comments. Dogs, cats, whatever. Um, would be beautiful. I love connecting with you all and I'm always there the first two days um, after a new video comes out. Team's always there, but I'm always reading everything for the first two days. Okay, let's do these Neptune reflective questions. So. Neptune reflective questions are things to like activate the mystic mind in ourselves. One is to, we'll just start with this one, it's simple, is to, <laughs> I like using these words, they're not the words I would use for myself, but they might work for you, is to almost like take yourself out of your body and look down at your life or yourself from outside of yourself. So we actually did this practice in monthly membership. If you want some like good, solid, tangible, guided practices around this, check out Bones, right? It's their monthly rewilding membership. You're, you're with me going into practice in a held, super beautiful, sacred space every month, the first, the 15th, and the 22nd for 47 bucks. It's crazy, like three live circles every month for 47 bucks. So that's like the craziest thing. I was literally thinking about that the other day. I was like, wow, 47 bucks, three circles? Like, should we? revisit that pricing? Should we revisit this? I think we're really like, sometimes I have this tendency to overgive, right? Like that's been like the thing in my life, like overgive, 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 overgive. But anyways, it's staying where it is for now because I love that space. I love that circle and I love that we've got something available with so much juice, so much meat, so much love, so many practices, so much sacredness at such a low price point. So anyways, that's available. But the practice, one of the practices we do is literally moving out of yourself to wise medicine woman, medicine man, whichever you feel to, you move up and you move and you're perched high on a mountain or high above and you're looking down. You're looking down from mystical wisdom, wise medicine woman, wise medicine man self. And you suddenly get a different perspective of life. You suddenly get a different perspective of life. I'll share a little practice I was doing just this morning, this practice, this Neptunian practice. Not so much Neptunian practice, but it's like a soul practice. This is another good one to feel into and to reflect on this. Before the end of the year, who do you need to make peace with? Who do you need to have a soul conversation with? High self to high self soul conversation. Is there forgiveness to be had? Is there a soul conversation to be had? And it's it's not, it's not from a standpoint of you're wanting to get anything out of it, right? I want to be really, really clear about that because whenever it comes to working with other people, I have really high standards, right? I, I hold such a high, strong line of integrity. Like you do not call someone in without their permission. You do not cast spells. You do, you do, we do not do, like that is not the space at all that I ever um, <laughs> would, I don't know, invite anyone to ever work in. But when it comes from a space of my whole intention here is to just let love flow, fuck yeah, right? Like that's a prayer for someone, that's a blessing for someone, that's just sending grace for someone, and that is always welcome, right? You're, you're being a channel for love and a channel for grace, that's all, like that's stunning, but there's, 
there's ways to get little human self out of the way. Like the, you can't go into it with uh, a hook with and a hook meaning you can't go into something like that. It's not a genuine grace prayer or love prayer. If we have an agenda, if I have an outcome that I am needing to get to, right? So let's say I realize, wow, my mom and I had a really challenging 2023, right? This could be one of the most powerful practices you ever do, right? This could be one of the most powerful practices you ever close the year with and start 2024 with, is you go through a whole, you go through every single person in your life, everyone that's close to you, even the ones from way long time ago, right? That maybe used to be close or you stopped talking to. And you just go through and you're like, all right, where can I loosen the karmic knots? Where can I loosen the karmic knots? Where can I, where can I channel forgiveness, grace, love, right? Forgiveness is a tricky one because forgiveness oftentimes comes with resentment or wanting to get people back. So let me just remove that one unless you can hold that in super high pure light, right? I know now I'm getting into like how to do practices. I promise you I will get to the astrology. If this is pissing you off, just fast forward, right? Like just skip this part, go to the next part. But I said I want to go deep and I want to give you some really good stuff. And this is just, this is how I operate. This is where the juice and rewilding is at. It's in the depths, right? It's not in the surface level. Um, let me just tell you what's going on. It's let me tell you what's going on. Let me tell you how to work with it. And let me also kind of get you there, right? So that we can actually do something instead of just like think about it. Because thinking about stuff is one thing. Embodying it and living it is a completely different reality. And for me in rewilding, everything that we do, it's about fucking living it, right? Living it, living as love, living, living higher, um, higher states of relationships, more evolved forms of relationships. It's about living it. You actually experience the dang thing, not just like read the book and go like, wow, that sounds amazing. Hmm, that must be for someone else, not me. Right? All right, so let me keep going with this one. Um, here's the practice. Feel into who it's a little bit glitchy with or who you could just bring some love to. And you go, this is the way I do it, I go just above my crown, I feel into my highest self, and then I let my highest self connect into their highest self, right? But it's, it's with a lot of love and a lot of grace, right? It's not, you're not, you're not causing more cords. You cannot do this if you're too pissed off or you have resentment or you wanna kill someone. Right, this, otherwise you're just casting spells and trying to be some like silly witch, right? And like you don't have a lot of juice if you're not coming from love and light, right? You just, you, bleh, bleh. Otherwise you're just doing like black magic and if you're doing black magic, this ain't the channel for you, right? You're in the wrong spot. Rewilding is not for you. Something else might be for you, but this is not your path. This is, uh, <laughs> so you hold that space and it's just like, all right, my soul to your soul. Feel the energetics in myself. My soul to your soul, right? Like, I just, I, I bless you, I set you free, I love you, it's so stunning. Uh, there's just nothing here other than just fucking love. And that's it, you just hold that. That's it. This is crazy. It's crazy what that'll do, crazy. All right, I don't wanna get too stuck in that. Let me see if I've got a few more reflective questions for us. Uh, now we'll come back to it. Neptune's not super great for reflective questions because it's so mystic. That's why I was like, reflective questions and I went into two freaking practices, right? Because Neptune's the mystic. It's the mystic. The mystic goes beyond the logical mind. It goes beyond the rational mind. It goes into the mysteries. It goes into alchemy. It goes into those different states. And so whatever it is that supports you uh, around that is really good. For some of us, we might be seeking more spiritual outlets. We might be seeking more spiritual knowledge. We might be seeking more spiritual experiences around this time, kind of leaving 2023, going into 2024. Uh, we've got a workbook. <laughs> that sounds really stupid. You're like, Sabrina, you just said spiritual experiences. We have a workbook though that's got 35 meditation practices in it. So if you're like, wow, I'm really feeling this call to expand my spiritual capacities, that's 35 new practices that maybe you've done before, maybe you've never heard of before. Uh, it's totally free, to totally free. It's a guide to come, oh, ooh, 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 ooh. This is super powerful. 
It comes with two things. One is a video tutorial that goes with it, which is a podcast that goes into all 35 of those practices. So if you're like, wow, I just, I need like a free resource. I need a spiritual expansion, right? Workbook and do the video tutorial. But here's the best part about this one. I love this. I, I love this. It has the golden Kali meditation that comes with it. Golden Kali meditation. This is like one of the most famous meditations in all of rewilding of all time, right? Of all eight years, this is probably the most talked about meditation is the Golden Kali meditation. Here's the cool part. This new moon, Kali, the Kali asteroid is on the south node. Yeah. <laughs> Kali is all about releasing. That golden Kali meditation is all about letting go and releasing, right? Letting go of karmas, releasing karma. South node is karmic past life, ancestral territory, where we came from, karmic backpack. There is no better time to do the Kali golden meditation than on this new moon, right? And it's free. It's free. Just go look for 35 meditations workbook. It's a bonus with the workbook. It's an audio guided meditation. You get to go directly into it. So go check that out. Link below or wherever all over the place. Um, it's what I will do on the new moon. I was just thinking, is this true? That's why my eyes were over here. I'm like, is this true? Will I do, I will do, I probably won't listen to myself because I can't stand listening to myself, uh, but I will do a golden Kali meditation that I'll just take myself into uh, on this new moon because Kali on the south node is really fucking beautiful for letting go. Really beautiful for cutting away karmas, um, for excavating like, deep old stuff that we didn't necessarily know was there that's holding us back. And with Eris on the North Node, she's been there for a while. We've talked about this in past videos, but that's another dark goddess. We've got dark goddesses guarding the destiny line, that South Node, North Node, karmic nodes of fate. We've got them guarding. I mean, they're, they're, hold, they're gonna hold us to the truth. They're gonna hold us to highest potentials and they might amplify, they probably will amplify <laughs> the, um, the noise, <laughs> like how loud it is. You know, sometimes we're like, hmm, I need a signier sign, right? Like I need my intuition to just turn it up a couple levels because I can't quite hear, I'm not real sure. Like, let it be loud. I remember I used to say that prayer all the time when I was younger and I didn't have such a connection to my intuition. I was just like, please let it be loud because I'm I'm so silly, I don't hear it or when I do hear it, I ignore it and I write blah, 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 let it be loud. These two will make it loud. Like they will make it, they will make it so loud that they will move the physical world to get you on your path, right? <laughs> to move you further along your destiny line, right? They will rip things out of your life that you ain't willing to let go of. So feel into that. What is it that has been wanting <laughs> to be let go of? It's time, it's past time, it's due time, but you're not. And that's some of the potential that these dark goddesses have is they will rip things out of your life. They will put things in your way. They will put obstacles in your way to make you like take a left turn when you were planning on going straight. They'll do all sorts of wild, beautiful, wonderful things. Uh, so that's just a piece to work with. Um, Remember I mentioned Bones, that monthly membership where we gather live three times. There's a free workshop in there called Nothing But Soul. That's a really beautiful guided three-part workshop series to go through to support this North Node, South Node. For those of you who are in membership, this is a really good thing to do before the end of the year. It supports that soul purpose journey. It kind of supports the letting go of 2023 moving into 2024. So. If you're not in Bones, it's open. The link's below. Again, it's 47 bucks. Like that's the silliest thing I've ever done. Who knows how long we'll keep it that way. But for now, we are. All right, um, let me keep going here. Uh, do you wanna talk sweet aspect or do you wanna talk dun dun dun? I feel like we need a little sweet. Let's do a little sweet because we just did some dark goddesses. Let's do the lighter side of the feminine. So this new moon, new moons, our sun and moon are conjunct in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is in itself a sweet-ish sign, right? It's 
kind of associated with Jupiter. Jupiter is associated with grace, with expansion, with mind opening, right? It's beautiful with seeking, with kind of new adventures is Sagittarius. Higher mind, higher learning is kind of Sag territory. So this new moon energy, you can think about new chapters, planting new seeds from that space. But here's the sweet, beautiful feminine aspect is conjunct Parvati. I love Parvati. Parvati, when working with her experientially, reminds me of Mary Magdalene. And I know for a lot of you, Mary Magdalene is maybe more well known than Parvati. To me, this is, me just take this for what it's worth. Um, Mary Magdalene, they both hold sacred union. They both hold love, right? Like love, um, sacred union. But for me, how they feel different, the differences in them is like Mary Magdalene would hold more of the heart mysteries, whereas Parvati would hold more of the mystic mysteries. It's like a little bit of a higher mystic vibration to Parvati, although they both hold sacred union, they both hold the wisdom, right, of, of that, of love for the masculine, love for themselves. They're both, to me, whole sovereign, like whole unto self. They're both sovereign. They really bring the feminine into like the fullness of the feminine, which I love about those two, right? It's, it's like, yes, I am the fullness of it. I am all of the faces of the mother. And this is how I present myself, right? As like this whole woman. And it's so much love. It's so embodied. But what I feel Parvati brings is a little more around like tantric wisdom, tantrika expression, a little more around sacred sexuality potentially, a little, but, but from like a real mystical standpoint, right? So she just goes to like a little bit different of a vibration. Um, and this isn't just my own experiences, this is also from holding and witnessing hundreds, thousands of others journeying through these different archetypal energies and just sharing, you know, sharing experiences, being with them, hearing them, witnessing them, feeling into them. Uh, so you can kind of feel into that for yourself. That's a really beautiful grace aspect to lean into. I see this being amplified, that energy, because of Venus opposing Jupiter. So Venus will have just kind of come out of this like underworld feel. This, because she was square to Pluto and she had just moved into Scorpio. Right, so that's a pretty, she's still gonna be in Scorpio for this new moon. She's in the underworld still, but she's opposing Jupiter, right? She's opposing Jupiter, still in the under, still in like scorpionic territory, but scorpionic territory can bring deeper depths to things. I like that Venus is in Scorpio while so much is in Sag, because Sag, if we were to look at, you know, maybe some of the, I don't know, warning signs around Sag energy, too much Sag energy, and we can surface level stuff. Too much Sag energy, and we just bounce from one thing to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing, and we miss the depth. Like we miss the emotional depth. I love Sag for the fact that it's like a truth bomber, right? It, it's a truth bomber. My sister's a Sag. I have really close friends that are like many, many, really, really close friends that are Sagas. And of course, this is no reflection of you if you're a Sag because all of our charts are very, very different, right? So what I'm saying is not reflective of anyone. Some of the Sages I know are like the most emotionally intelligent, deep diving people I know on the planet. So this is not to say anything about that. Our charts are very, very multi-layered, very, very different. We're all wired different. So don't be offended by this. But Sag, if we just take Sag energy, it's, um, I'll, I'll just talk about my sister because she won't care. She knows I've shared this before and she's so fine with me sharing it. But my sister has this capacity to just like, give you the truth. Like, here's just the facts. Here's the facts without like holding the emotional, like I'm going to give her the facts, but this, this might like hurt. She doesn't speak to the, Hey, this might hurt a little bit. She's, she's actually really good at it now, probably because she has me and I'm like the most sensitive, emotional fucking creature on the goddamn planet. So she's had her whole life training um, with me as her sister, right? Like the Leo who's like, no, my heart. Right. Um, but 
where she's just like, but this is just the truth, right? They're really good. It's like the scales, not Libran scales, but they're just, they're like good at uh, like, here's just the truth of the situation. Why, why do we have to get all wrapped up in it? Why does it have to be so dramatic? Why does it like, who cares? This is just the truth. Move forward. Let's do. Um, so you can kind of feel into that for Sag season too. There's also something about um, this like, a joyful lightheartedness of Sag season, right? So you can feel into that energy if that helps to support. But here's what I'm trying to say around Venus and Scorpio. I love that there's this heart as Venus, right? Matters of the heart. We talked about this. Matters of the heart is sitting in the depths. Mind, right? So we just talked about this. Mercury is going from Capricorn, which is really earthy, really practical, really logical, is going from Capricorn back into Sag and then we'll go direct on the first, you know, traversing back through Sag back into Capricorn. So isn't that wild? Like that's the journey. So feel into this now. This is maybe the next reflective piece to feel into. Hopefully I can get us some damn questions this time. But it's like Mercury starts out in really earthy, grounded, practical, tangible things. So like right now, I'll give you an example. I'm working with the team, the rewilding team, and we're working like really earthy, practical, tangible things. Like what is our social media strategy? What is our 2024 like overall schedule? What is, you know, what are best practices for this part of the team, best practices for this? So that's like real tangible, earthy, kind of grounded sorts of things. And so think about that in your life, right? And then what we get to do is the mind, it gets to go backwards from grounded, tangible, logical, practical, like containers and structures and frameworks and best practices. And it gets to go backwards into stage and have an open mind, like stand back, have an open mind. Okay, cool. Let's get some truth up in here. Actually, that structure wasn't the greatest. Um, actually, we're not looking at this. Um, from the expanded view that we can be. Actually, there's a higher way of coming into this. This is stunning. Think about this for your life. Think about it for your health goals for next year, your spiritual goals for next year, your family goals, your love goals, your career goals, your money goals, your, you know, whatever it is that you're kind of drawn to, to feel into for 2023 to 2024 and lean into those energetics right from the 13th to the first we're in this backward phase so what is it like it's creating space and oftentimes just like morning journaling morning journaling you just journal like first thing you do when you wake up you just write whatever's there what did i dream about what's top of mind what's coming up for me what's hot for me what's alive for me you just blah, 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 right because it's mercury messenger of the gods delivering because the mind is gone retrograde delivering messages from the depths of like and here's how we can revise our life our life in this area health you know, career, money, whatever it is. Here, 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 here. So create spaces for the mind to be able to do that work, for the mind to be able to do, think retrograde, revise, revisit, review, renew, rejuvenate, re all the rewords. It's stunning. This is stunning. It's, re it's really beautiful. Um, if you have your chart, look at where Mercury's going retrograde in your chart, right? It's from Capricorn into Sag, back into Capricorn. You can look up all the details if you need to like Google the exact um, degrees, if you want to get wild with it. If you don't know how to do that, we have a free masterclass. It shows you how to run a free chart. It'll show you exactly how to look this up. Uh, you can look at that below. Again, it, you just sign up for it. It's free. It's free. We wanted to support everyone who's hanging out doing astrology with us. All right, so the two free things, let me just be super, super clear. One, free astrology masterclass. The other thing that I spoke about that is free is a 35 meditations workbook that comes with the Golden Collie meditation. So it's the workbook that comes with Golden Collie meditation. That's the one that you want to do on this new moon because Collie's on the south node. It's about releasing. It's about... Um, Oh, karmic knots, karmic backpack. What is it that we are ready to let go of? And it's Kali, right? It's Kali, one of like the fiercest, most ferocious, alchemizing uh, dark feminine archetypes that we can work with. Dark, not dark, bad. Dark as in hidden mystical capacities. Um, all right, let me feel. We got to talk about Pluto. So I said we're going to talk about light, nice, beautiful stuff. We did that with Parvati, Sag energy, um, kind of talked about how we can get the most out of this Mercury retrograde from Capricorn into Sag. 
Now I want to talk about this one. Dun dun dun. Pluto. <laughs> Pluto. This is a long standing transit um, where he is moving into Aquarius. You've probably been hearing about this for a year, maybe two. Who knows how long you've been hearing about this. It's intense right now because he's in the last couple degrees of Capricorn, right? He's been making this dance from Capricorn into Aquarius. He'd touch in and then he'd go back into Capricorn, right? Now he's going direct, so he's gonna touch into Capricorn or he's gonna touch into Aquarius again. And he does that, do I have these dates? He does that January 20th. So from now until January 20th, he's in Capricorn. He's in Capricorn. He's in Capricorn. This is crazy. I'm gonna try to explain to you why. It's so deep, so Pluto, Pluto transits, we are all in this transit. It's gonna to touch us personally. Pluto transits are deep transformation. Deep transformation. Sometimes it's so deep, we don't even know that it's going on. It's also long-term transformation. Deep, long-term transformation. But here's how I think we can ride this wave. Because we're end of year, right? We're in the end of the year. So we're in this collective soup of letting go, letting go, letting go, end of year, end of year, end of year, end of year. Here's what we wanna do. We wanna hop on that wave, that collective wave of what is it that I'm done with in 2023. And we wanna feel into deeper aspects, deeper thought patterns, deeper ways that we're being limited by ourselves, ways that we are being the victimizer to ourselves, we are being the perpetrator to ourselves, we are being the one who's holding ourselves back, limiting ourselves in some way, abusing ourselves in some way, beating ourselves up in some way, really wanna keep it to self here, really wanna keep it to self here, really wanna look at how am I disempowering myself, you can also look at this by who am I inviting into my life that disempowers me, but I'm still making the choice to stay in this marriage, to stay in this job, to stay in this friendship, to stay in this family system, to stay da 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 Power. Pluto is all about power. Power. He's in the last couple degrees of Capricorn. It's like power in the masculine. Capricorn is old school. Old boys club. Here's a wild one that I just uncovered this morning. I'll give you this example. Um, the masculine in my family, I love them. I love my family. I'm going home in a couple days and I'm gonna spend Christmas with them. I love them so ferociously, right? The masculine in my family is pretty Capricornian, right? Like they're great, rep my, my father is ex-army, ex-military, right? Like it's, that's extraordinarily Capricornian energy. It's also very much, um, it's, it's just like old boys club. It's like old school, you know, like the old, old school ways. Like, here's, a, here's a secret. I'm pretty sure they all voted for Trump. We don't really talk about it. I mean, some of them do. They talk about it really fucking loud. Some of them do. But anyways, I know that's like old news. We don't even talk about who voted for who because that was such a shit show and so divisive and so horrible. I don't judge them for that. I don't judge anybody for that. I don't care. I, I'm not, that's not what I'm here for, right? Is that at all? But maybe it just gives you a little bit more of a sense. I'm trying to give you a little bit of a sense of Capricorn, right? And so here's the deal, Capricorn, it's like, I've always watched this, it's just like the old school ways of the old masculine just clinging on to every last drop of fucking power that it can. And it's like pushed up in a corner, fearful as fuck, and it's doing whatever, right? To me, this is how I see the wars breaking out, is just like, just clinging, grasping on like the old school financial system that totally needs a fucking upgrade, right? Like why crypto, actually crypto seems to be doing a little bit better lately. But anyways, it's like this just like clinging on to, and here's the crazy part. This is, and I'm gonna call myself out on this in a minute. You ready for it? So I'm meditating this morning and I'm meditating on this transit and what it means for me personally. And I'm feeling into this like, all right, golden collie meditation on the new moon. Like what is it that I'm gonna hold in my intention of old pattern to let go of? And it was watching like, oh my God, this old school Capricornian masculine thing, I am, I'm attracted to. I am. I, I, I am. And why? Why is it attractive to me? Not, I'm not even saying sexually. I'm, I'm just, I'm attracted to it. Why am I attracted to it? You want to know why? This is insane to me. Because it makes me feel safe. Now I know there's a misuse of power. 
I know there's a misuse of power. I know there's a much better way to be in the masculine. I know there's a much better way to wield power. I'm well aware of that. But my system knows this. So because it knows it, it feels safe in it. Here's a wild example. During this Pluto Capricorn transit, I moved my money, right? Like with a financial advisor, I moved my money from a guy who reminded me of my uncle. Literally like coaches football, coaches wrestling, uh, like that very much Capricorn, like Wisconsin, like Midwestern football fan, you know, just like, the old boys club, this old school way. And I, and I could feel like, wow, this is so bad. I don't even believe what he believes around money. I don't even believe in investing what he believes in because I, I, I hate supporting what he wants to support, right? Like I just, I can't, like there is such a fucking rub here. But I originally put my money there because I felt safe with it, right? Because it's an old school pattern. It's an old familial pattern right and it is what i grew up with it's what i know it's, therefore it feels safe it's a sense of safety and security i know it's not the best but there was was a deep overriding like primal base chakra safety security overriding that all day long so there was this like jam up in my system now I think it was about six months ago, maybe more. I don't even know how long ago. Anyways, moved all of my money over to a still masculine essence being, but progressive. So to me, literally, I moved my money from Capricorn to Aquarius. It's legit how I feel like I did it. I literally moved it with Pluto and Pluto's been doing that transit back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Power, money is a representation of power. Pluto, power, right? It, it was so mind blowing to me. I'm like, fuck, I'm right on this damn transit. <laughs> I'm following right along, right? Like, and now this time, so I did that the last time he moved into Aquarius. I'm sitting here wondering like, hmm, when he moves into Aquarius this time, I kind of have a sense of what this particular pattern is that I'm letting go of to upgrade into uh, higher, more evolved forms of masculine right? How I relate to them, what I call into my life, what I feel safe with, what I'm even expressing through myself, right? So this is just, this is deep. It's deep. It's a lot of unconscious material. It's ancestral. It's familial. You'll want to go to base chakra. You'll want to go to tribal. Like what does the tribe believe? What does the family believe? Is that my truth? Is that my soul's truth? Because that was not my soul's truth in any way, shape or form. My soul was like, this is so bad, that's so bad, that's bad, right? <laughs> but but my, my ancestral patterning and like my base chakra, my need to feel safe and secure in the known, what I grew up with, what I knew, that overrode my higher, higher, more evolved expressions and what I'm moving into, all right? So feel into that for yourself, feel into, let me talk a little bit more about Aquarian energy because if we're going from Capricorn, I gave you a lot of feels around Capricorn, right? So it's power, Pluto's power, it's deep transformation, it's death for rebirth, right? Long-term transits, changing stuff from really, really deep places. Power can also, it doesn't have to be money, right? That's just one blatant, obvious example, right? It can be anything. Like some of us, we derive power from looking pretty. Some of us, we derive power from sexuality. Some of us, we derive power from many different places, right? Many, many, many different places. Um, but when moving from Capricorn into Aquarius, it's a new, it's a coming into the new. It's a coming into, oh, this was one that I thought about this morning while walking too. It was work smarter, not harder. Work smarter, not harder. Aquarian is work smarter. Uh, Capricorns work harder, right? Work harder. You gotta, you gotta work really hard, you know. Ugh. But it's work smarter. It's newer ways. Uh, it's more evolved expressions. It's more inclusive. It really takes into the account all is one. So it's less uh, where I see Capricorn as being like, not, not selfish, but more like this is my inner circle. I'm gonna take care of my inner circle, 
right? You can feel that in like old school family values. I'm gonna take care of my family. Like fuck the rest of you all, don't care. Like if it hurts you, this is my responsibility here. Where Aquarian is like, nah, like yeah, I love my family, but make choices for the good of the all of everything. I'm gonna make choices for the good of the all of everything. Right? And that was like that financial move. Now it's making choices, like want to invest in the good of the all of everything, right? Want to, want to support the good of the all of everything. It's way beyond just me, way beyond the rewilding team, way beyond the rewilding community, way beyond even the human community. It's more into the galactic. So some of you might be feeling this is a galactic move. You start to hear, there's a lot of this chat around new forms of relationship. This one might be one for you. There's new ways of relating. There's new forms of relationship. What are these? Or there's new ways of co-creating together. There's new ways of working together. What are these? There's, we can get super tangible. There's new forms of money. There's new forms of food. There's new forms of housing. There's new, there's new forms. And so that's, that's a queer, that's a query. And it's beautiful. A um, little bit of a, uh, warning about this. I heard someone say it like this. Don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Capricorn is very good at grounding things though, right? Is really good at grounding things and really good at creating structure. So we want to take the good groundedness. We want to take the good structure into the Aquarian age with us, right? Because Aquarian can get really ungrounded, can get really heady, can get really detached from emotion, can get really like, uh, yeah, I don't need to go into all of that because I'll just, uh, I don't think I'll stop. Because <laughs> it's literally like, and there's no stopping. It's just expansion, 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 expansion. But I've actually left my body and I suddenly don't have a body and I'm not able to bring any of this back in to make it manifest in the world. And so that's what we don't want to lose from Capricorn because Capricorn is a great physical manifester. All right, so take, take that really good, beautiful stuff that we've learned from Pluto. Um, in Capricorn over these last 20 years of upgrading systems, upgrading how we manifest, upgrading masculine structures in ourselves, around ourselves, all of that um, into the new. Right now, take the good into the new um, and let the old stuff crumble, the old stuff that doesn't serve crumble. Um, but really want to invite you to look at safety, security as a block. I actually wrote down this whole list here. Here, 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 I love this. Um, feel into these things as potential ways that we're blocking ourselves. This is a good reflective list. Are you potentially blocking yourself by saying things like, I'm not good enough, um, I'm not ready yet, uh, I'm not sure that I have it in me to do the thing that you're really called to do, right? Um, another thing that can be blocking us is guilt. Guilt of if I, I remember I had to go through this one, if I evolve or if I change my lifestyle or if I'm suddenly much more happy, I feel guilty because my family, um, I'm not in my family system in that way anymore, right? I, I'm not relatable. Uh, I, feel, I feel guilty for leaving people behind. That's a big one. I feel guilty for leaving people behind. I don't wanna leave anybody behind but you're actually denying your soul's call. You're denying your soul's evolution. You're denying your true shining self. You're denying your radiance. You're, and then in turn, you're denying them your radiance. You're denying them your fullest expression of self, which is a gift to them. They karmically signed up to be with you and you denying your greatest expression of self, that's of that's no gift to anybody. All right, we'll keep going. I don't want to dive too deep into that. Um, survival, I already talked about this, right? Are you inadvertently limiting yourself out of like safety. Well, I feel safe. I just, cause this is what's known to me. I know it's not great, but I at least know it. Like, uh, what is that old saying? Um, the, the devil, you know, what is that? Maybe someone can leave that in the comments, like better the devil, you know, than the devil you don't or something like that. Like what? Well, that's like a crazy thing around like, well, it's the devil. It's like, it's bad. Like you're kind of in that saying, like stating you don't fucking like it, but you're going to stay with it anyways, just because it's known. That's to me silly. That's denying transformation. That's denying evolution. That's denying the fact that we could create something that is in greater alignment. That is not something we consider bad. <laughs> I hate that saying, but I love that we get to call it out. Um, Okay, let's see. Fear of judgment. I'll leave us with that one. Uh, is that a way that you're possibly uh, limiting yourself? Fear of judgment. Fear of being cast out. 
fear of being ostracized, um, fear of fear of losing people, fear of losing love, right? Fear, fear of being, I remember mine, this is a lot of people's, being the, well, if I really become who I feel like I'm here to be, I'm gonna be like the old lonely cat lady on the hill. Everyone's just gonna call like, whoa, who's the witch living on the top of the hill with all the cats, right? Um, so you can feel into kind of what, what that feels like for you around limits, you know, how are we limiting ourselves? And this is such a good time. Reflect on this at the end of 2023 going into 2024. It's gonna be really powerful, especially with Mercury, the mind going in the inner world, such a good potent time because the mind is wired to see deeper. It's wired to think about things deeper. And it's how am I take power back? Not how are they, how is my work? Because you're suddenly taking up, giving all your power away, Pluto. Power, power dynamics, right? So take your power back and just say I, 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 I. What have I created in the rewilding team, right? What have I created in my neighborhood relations? What have I created, you know, like I. So just come back to I, whatever it is that you're looking at, whatever it is that you're looking at. Um, okay, wow, that got really big. Um, there is one thing that I would love to kind of warn you, I don't know, get you excited about, not warn you about, warning is like, this could be so bad. Um, get you excited about, I'm gonna do a 2024 astrology video, like what's coming in 2024, the big aspects, the big things to look out for, kind of what I'm feeling and seeing. I've already given you a little glimpse with that Pluto dance, right? He finally, goes into, I'll just share this piece with you just so you can have some dates in your head and look forward to that video. It'll come up before the end of the year, so stay tuned. Um, it'll come up before probably the week of Christmas, probably, yeah, maybe just after Christmas, I think, that'll come out, but it'll come up before the first, so stay tuned. Also, I'm gonna share this with you. I'm gonna share this with you. You ready for it? No, I'm not gonna share it with you. Um, if you're not signed up to our newsletter, you might wanna do that. Um, you will get signed up for a newsletter when you do that free workbook or you do the free uh, astrology masterclass, right? Like that'll automatically put you in there or just go to rewildingforwomen.com or sabrinalynn.com. You'll see like sign up for newsletters. Sign up for the newsletter. There's something coming. You don't want to miss it. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. It's free. It's big. It's beautiful. It's coming down the pipeline. I'm not announcing it today, um, but it's coming. So if you're not on the newsletter list, that's the first place that will hear about it. Um, you definitely want to do that. And you can easily do that by signing up for the workbook so that you get the golden collie meditation, which is the thing that you want to do on this new moon because it's the last new moon going into the new year. It's a really great chance to release some stuff, release some karmic baggage, right? Like lighten the load. Let's lighten the load so that when 2024 comes right, it's just like rocket launching into some potentials that we maybe didn't even know we had, right? Just like really that next greatest self that like spread your wings that was something i felt into this morning when i was meditating on this conversation it was just like fuck may we all spread our wings you know whatever that means for you like can you can we just like get them out and like spread them like gosh to see all of our beautiful wings just fuck fly you know fly like that's the greatest gift we can give everyone it's the greatest gift we can give all of our loved ones is us just spreading our wings and going for it. You know, Aquarian age is Pluto going into Aquarius. It's about flying our freak flag. <laughs> right? It's you in your unique self, right? You just owning it. You're doing it. So maybe you got rainbow colored wings and you got to get them out. Maybe you got like eight wings instead of just two, right? Whatever it is, it's, it's time. Like it's so time. All right, I love you all so much. I would love to see you in the comments. If you loved this and don't wanna miss anything else, hit subscribe, hit the bell, notify, you'll never miss one. Hit the like button, that always super helps and I super appreciate it. And again, would love to see you in the comments below. Uh, so much love to you. Mwah.